I mean, I've seen people do like damsel fish to cycle their tank and stuff, but at, almost every single time I've noticed people do that, they regret putting the damsel fish in there first because it establishes territory. Mm -hmm. And no matter what kind of damsel you have, they do get territorial and aggressive. So when you're yeah. trying to put other like peaceful fish in there, like gobies, um, antheus, and all that sort of stuff, they can get very territorial. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Coral Reef Talk podcast. Super excited to be here. We're here with Joey Jones, as always. How's Super it going, everyone? It's going to be a good episode. Yes, today we're going to take a look at what Levi has been doing recently, as well as jump into some of the basics behind setting up a new saltwater aquarium and going through the nitrogen cycle and things like that. So if you're brand new to the hobby, this is the episode to be at. Definitely. Yeah. So with that being said, Levi, how have you been? What have you been up to? I've been good. Uh, the last couple of weeks have been insane. Every single weekend I've had something going on. It's been it's it's been fun, but it's been tiring. I started out with last week. Well, the week before last week, I was in the Keys with my brother we were doing some collecting and some fishing hanging out and then last weekend i was in daytona and aquashella which was very fun and finally i've had a weekend to kind of just relax and just kind of get some stuff done around the house we're doing a lot with the tanks this weekend so hopefully we'll have some cool content coming out on my channel here soon but yeah it's been crazy there's a lot a lot going on did a reef builders video they came out to my work and uh, filmed me talking about some non-photosynthetic corals. So that was fun. It's always uh, fun, like, kind of teaching some people about uh, kind of what I do and what I like to keep. And then at Aquashala this past weekend, I actually did a talk on non-photosynthetic corals. It was a workshop, uh, kind of just diving into the NPS world, because a lot of people don't really dabble with that. There's a lot of unknown factors that go on in that realm. Uh, but in this day and age, there's quite a bit of tools that we can use to kind of help uh, propel the success of those corals. So I'm super excited. Big things coming soon yeah. too. That's awesome, man. And Aquashella is a pretty large event. So how, how did you handle that? I mean, probably got a lot more people at this talk than some of your previous talks, but tell us a little bit about how that went. Yeah. So that was definitely nerve wracking. Uh, when I first got there, at first we couldn't get the slides to go up to the screen. We we're trying to figure that out. Oh man. So I started to like really panic because I'm like, these slides don't go up. I'm just going to have to go up there and just talk about non-photosynthetic corals without anything to kind of go off of. So I was getting really nervous. Turns mm -hmm. out we just needed to push the HDMI cord in a little further. And that's all that, that did it. There but, you go. Um, yeah. Just check that connection sometimes. Yep. So yeah, that was definitely nerve wracking. There was a decent amount of people, a lot more than I expected. Uh, mm -hmm. The way this specific stage was set up was set up in an area that people kind of walk by, you know, so if they kind of see what's on the screen or see something they're interested in, they're going to sit down and uh, take a break from walking around and listening. So it was definitely nerve wracking. Elizabeth kind of helped me out. She's just smiling in the crowd, it made me a little <laughs> yeah. feel a little better up there. So, but it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I had quite a few people come up to me afterwards on uh, just asking mm -hmm. some questions and I even uh, signed a little uh, sticker for someone too. That was a first. Okay. That was interesting. But Very yeah, cool. it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's awesome. And especially talking about non photosynthetic corals. I mean, there's a lot of things to learn, like you're saying, when handling mm -hmm. those types of corals in your reef tank. And a lot of people just tend to gravitate towards the corals that are more of the mainstream, like more okay. LPS or soft corals, and of course SPS corals, but not so much NPS. And that's really cool that you talk a lot about those kind types of corals. Um, yeah, for sure. And some of that video, we're going to jump into it. Maybe you can talk us through, commentate on what's going on. Yeah. Uh, but it kind of, we're going to jump into like kind of your beginning. You talk a little bit about how you got into NPS corals and and that type of thing. So I'm going to put that up now. We'll take a look at that. I've always enjoyed unique corals and I dived into like non photosynthetics. Kind yeah, like so this right here is my Caribbean reef, high. actually. And I just really was super passionate about But yeah, it. just kind of talking about getting into the non-photosynthetic right. corals. It all really started yeah. at my first show I ever went to. Just seeing some of the colors, I guess, that really just blew my eyes away. Uh, under white light, specifically. Yeah. Uh, and I was just really intrigued by it. And so I uh, bought my first Gorgonian at that show. And I put it in my regular reef tank. And it lasted a few months, but it started growing algae. And I'm like, man, like, what do I got to do to this thing? Because I, I really didn't know at the time. So I did some research and realized that they were a deep water coral and they don't require light. And at that time, I, I really didn't know anything. Like, I was just, I should have done my research like I tell people to do all the time now. I was new. There's a lot going on. So I, I tried it out. 
Uh, I actually ended up setting up a, their own tank. So I got some more Gorgonians. I got some chili corals. And that's kind of how it all started. And then I'm, once I got used to those corals, I started kind of like looking for some other weird non-photosynthetics. We got the orange Octogorgonian. This is actually off the coast on the east coast over there. Yeah. 50 to 200 foot. Super cool. These are those uh, Chromaneptia carnation corals. Uh, I recently did an article on those and the Swiftia on mm -hmm. reef builders. So for many of you guys that don't know, I am writing for reef builders now. That's been really fun. Just kind of sharing my yeah. knowledge for some niche stuff that I really enjoy. Yeah, very cool. So, so yeah, I won't play the entire video. So if you want to check out the video further uh, with Levi here about non-photosynthetic corals, you can check it out on the Reef Builder channel. But yeah, that, that's always really, really cool and fun topic to talk about and learn about. Yeah. A lot of neat corals over there. But today we're going to be talking about setting up a brand new reef aquarium and some of the basics behind doing that. What kind of equipment do you need and what what should you get when you're first starting out. So what type of things do you talk about first? If someone's like, Hey, I want to set up a saltwater aquarium. What do I need to do? Is it super expensive? How do you talk to that? How do you speak to that? So I always like to tell people, uh, like they ask, like, like you said, if it's expensive or if it's not, uh, there's different ways you can go about it to make it cheap. I mean, that's all not always the best route. Uh, you want to have some decent equipment to help. I mean, you also want to invest in some decent rock uh, live rock even to help with the cycle and then you're going to want to put sand uh, i made the mistake when i first started my first tank of using pool filter sand because it was just dirt cheap it didn't go the greatest it was no. not good at all so cribsy uh, is definitely one of my favorites um there's even uh, the tampa bay saltwater they do live sand as well yes uh, I've heard that's really good and you probably know more about that because you've used it if i'm not mistaken Yep, that's uh, what I'm currently going through right now, building two 10-gallon yep. tanks with Tampa Bay saltwater, live rock, and live sand. And, I mean, if you want to start your tank up the fastest and the quickest way and probably the easiest way, then do it with live rock and live sand. Definitely. So Yeah, I mean, doing it that way, live rock, live sand, you're still going to have somewhat of a cycle. Uh, it's not just going to mm -hmm. instantly be ready to go. You're not going to be able to throw a bunch of fish in there, a bunch of corals. Uh, corals are a lot more lenient than the fish, so you might right. be able to get away with some corals at first. But I won't go throwing in fish the first week or two. Yeah, you, you definitely want to do it in phases and start out slowly mm -hmm. and build that up because your bacteria population is going to have to grow with the tank as exactly. you're adding stuff to the tank. And I mean... When you, if you do start adding some stuff a little early, you're going to definitely notice some major algae blooms, the diatoms, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. And that will go away with time once the bacteria is able to keep up with the nitrate load and actually kind of yeah. you get that nitrate cycle going. So it takes some time. It, you definitely got to be patient. It's not going to cycle like the first week, um, in my opinion. I mean, I've seen people say, that, oh, I cycled my tank in a week. I mean, mm -hmm. it might be possible, but... To really establish your tank, you're going to want to be patient with it because otherwise everyone that tries to cycle it super instantly, it ends up being a disaster. You get major algae blooms and it just doesn't really work out. I mean, there's like turbo start from Fritz. I've seen people do that. I'm not entirely sure how that works. I mean, obviously it's live bacteria, It's, but I'm, I'm not totally on board with that. I mean, I've seen people do it gotcha. and claim that they cycled their tank instantly. Well, and you have to have an ammonia source for the bacteria to exactly, consume yeah. so they can grow. But initially setting up a saltwater tank, you, you need a tank, yes. first of all. So picking up, picking out what size aquarium is going to work best in the space that you have. So if you don't have a large space, go with a smaller nano tank. There's plenty of sizes that you can choose from uh, plenty of tanks will work for you i know that a lot of times people say larger tanks can be easier but with a larger tank you also need larger pieces of equipment um, so they can tend to be more expensive some of the time but with a small simple tank like a hang on the back filter a heater and a light maybe a small protein skimmer but you don't really need too many bells and whistles if you're setting up a small tank uh, what are your thoughts on that yeah, I agree with you on that one. I mean, I have a bunch of nano tanks on the shelf next to me, and they have very minimal filtration. One of the tanks has uh, two little fishies little reactor on it with some Fosban, and it keeps the tank crystal clear. And then we, Elizabeth is working on her tank. She just set up a, I think it's like 10 gallons. It's an all-in-one system uh, okay. from Lifeguard Aquatics. We'll have videos out on that shortly. But that is an all-in-one system. It has a little pump that comes with it, a little spigot. 
you know, to push the water out, uh, like a nozzle. And it has a couple bells and whistles, but you don't need to go that fancy. Uh, right. You can literally buy a 10 gallon tank and be just fine. A lot of people say, Oh, that's not a good idea. I mean, you got to do what you can afford and what you have space for. I mean, there's a lot of mm-hmm. factors that play into it, but this can definitely be done as Joey's going to explain. So, yeah, absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the lifeguard tanks are pretty inexpensive. They're pretty affordable. You can get those on Amazon. Yeah. Um, they're but, relatively cheap for what they are. Yeah. And we, we can leave a link to that in the description below uh, to Amazon, but yeah, so once you pick out your tank, you get some filtration for it. Um, for instance, this one is just a hang on the back filter and a heater and a light. And that's all this tank really needs. So right here, we got live sand going in and then live rock. So whether you're doing live rock and live sand or dry rock and starting where you have to get it going with bottled bacteria, both ways are, are just fine. Um, some ways take a little bit longer to get going. And then all live rock means is that it has bacteria and the beneficial bacteria and stuff on it and in it so that way that kind of helps the cycle start the biggest thing with the small tanks and that people really should know uh that the evaporation is probably going to be the biggest problem yes because uh, yes it's a smaller tank it's a smaller water volume so your evaporation might, like it might evaporate like a half inch but your salinity is gonna go raise as it's evaporating mm-hmm. so just Keep that in mind because salt doesn't really evaporate entirely. So your salt levels will slowly rise as your tank evaporates. And the smaller the tank, the quicker it's going to rise because you just don't have that much water volume. Yeah, I'm topping off these tanks like every other day. So, I mean, yeah, you don't want your salinity fluctuating up and down all the time or or Mm -hmm. have a big change in that. But yeah, evaporation uh, with a smaller tank, for sure, you need to monitor that. But yeah, uh, this tank has macro algaes in it. The the big thing we're talking about or that we're going to get to, I got a few more slides here. Starting that nitrogen cycle and getting that thing going and what that looks like. Kind of created a quick little slide here. So you have your fish waste or decaying matter is going to produce ammonia. And ammonia is what is toxic for fish. So you don't want to add fish during this stage. That's why you need to let the process happen and let that bacteria build up. So you go from ammonia to nitrite, which is still toxic, but it's still doing the thing, doing the process until it gets to nitrate, which is less toxic. And so once you test your tank, so I would say when you're test when you're when you have a brand new tank and you're doing your test, you want to test every few days or at least once a week, you want to check your ammonia. And then once your ammonia gets to zero, to check it even farther than that, you will test uh, nitrites. Once your nitrites are at zero and you're reading nitrates, then you've kind of reached that cycle for the nitrogen cycle where your bacteria is converting ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. Then you can start slowly adding things to your aquarium and get that bacteria building more and more. So that is the nitrogen cycle in a nutshell. Any tips for getting a tank started? You you were mentioning that you're still a little iffy on the bottled bacterias. I mean, it's not that I'm like iffy on it. I just, I don't think it's gonna instantly cycle an aquarium. That's right, I'm right. Thinking. I mean, that definitely, I think would definitely help pr- like promote like the nitrogen cycle and get it moving along quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't think it's like going to be instant, if you know what I mean. Like, Gotcha. Gotcha. It's not like you pour it in and then you're good to go. Same yeah, day, put a fish and, in. Yeah. yeah. So usually uh, how many weeks would you say, depending on how you start it up? I mean, it could take, what, two to six weeks? Yeah. On, on average, I tend to notice the smaller tanks cycle a little bit quicker. I think that's probably just because of less water volume. My 75 gallon took about a month the cycle completely and then like the smaller tanks i mean a couple weeks and that's i mean it really ranges i mean there's so many different factors that play into it because i know some people that start with like just sand like dry rock and like no like bacteria whatsoever just whatever's in the water and stuff and that that can take months like yeah so like if you're gonna start out complete dry rock i do like you got to put like in my opinion put a little piece of live rock in there just to help promote like that bacteria growth. Otherwise it's going to take a lot longer. Yeah. Cause if you're starting with dry rock and like dry sand, you have no bacteria at all in the aquarium, you have to add mm-hmm. the bacteria. And so like you're saying, it's going to take a lot longer to develop. So you have to be a lot more patient with it. Now, how about lighting, uh, having a light during the cycle or when you're first setting up the tank, 
it's not really too nope. important to have a light. It's in the not beginning. really important. I mean, all right. it's going to do is just grow algae. That's really yep. all it's going to do. I mean, if you have no light, you're really not going to get too much of that. So just keep the light off and wait until your ammonia levels, like all that stuff levels out and then maybe try turning on your light. I mean, you're going to get algae either way, but as long as you don't have any corals or really any fish in there, I mean, there's not entirely a reason to have it. And then again, with the cycle in the beginning, I don't know if I said this earlier, but you want to make sure that you are getting ammonia readings and make yes. sure that you're getting nitrite readings and then make sure they drop back to zero before you start adding stuff. Because if yeah, you're testing I mean, it- like when, if you're doing like the fishless cycle, which I would recommend, uh, you mm -hmm. always want to put a little bit of food in there to kind of, you know, get your little cycle going to start up some ammonia i mean i've seen people do like damsel fish to cycle their tank and stuff but almost every single time i've noticed people do that they regret putting the damsel fish in there first because it establishes territory no matter what kind of damsel you have they do get territorial and aggressive so when you're yeah. trying to put other like peaceful fish in there like gobies antheus and all that sort of stuff they can get very territorial and then half the people end up tearing up their tank trying to get the fish out so i mean you really yeah. think what you're gonna do beforehand mollies are a good thing i mean they're really mm -hmm. easy to catch out once they, you know the tank cycles and you want to put some more stuff in there they're super hardy and they do help with algae um so i mean if you do want to leave them in there all they're going to do is just kind of help clean up your algae but i always try to go with like a fishless cycle just throw some food in there some tdo or something and yep. just let it go yeah once that breaks down it's going to start that cycle going so yeah yeah, that's a good way to do it. So now for this next segment, I thought that we would try a game to to test whether we can tell if something is a fish or a coral. Are you down? Yes, let's do it. All right. So if, yeah. if you think it's a fish, just say fish or coral, say coral. So for those of you listening, um, if you want to check out the video podcast on YouTube, you'll be able to see what we're about to do. Uh, but for us, what's going to happen is we're going to see an extreme close up of either a fish or a coral and whoever can guess it the fastest before it zooms all the way out will get more points so yeah so we're gonna have like i believe 10 seconds these are set up for they're gonna zoom out uh so if you guess it within if you guess it in the first like two seconds how about we'll go with five points okay um if it takes you like five seconds you get three points and if you wait all the way till the end you get one point like I said, I'm, I have not seen these video clips. A good friend of mine put these together for us so we can go ahead and see what the first one's like. Let's do this. Here, here we go. All right. Fish. Yeah, fish. Yep. Okay, awesome. Man, that's hard. It's so close. <laughs> right? All right, so what, what, what did I say that was? That's five points. Five yeah, points. We'll five. put it up there. Five points. All right, you ready for the next one? Yes. All right, here we go. Coral. coral. Oh, I don't know now. Oh, yep. Okay, yeah. Yep, Whew. it's a coral. I think you said that first. That's five points for you. All right. Coral. coral. I don't know. It could be like a rhino fish or something, but we both oh, said... Oh, no. No uh -oh. way. Oh. No. Was that a jellyfish or a coral? I think it... What? I can't tell. <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to reach out and get a point check for that one. All right, let's see if there's another one. Here we go. All right, so it's five and five. Fish. Fish. Oh. Rhinopius. Yeah. Oh, nice. Got him. All right. Ten to five. Coral. Coral. Right, I think I threw that one out there first. Let's see. Watch it be like a frog or stonefish or something. Oh. It is. It no. is. <laughs> No way. No. <laughs> Got us both. Man. Oh, that was the last one. So that means you win. You've won the game 10 to 5. That, that was fun. Like jellyfish, anemone, whatever it is, that threw me off. That threw me off as well. All right. So Levi wins it. The first ever guess that fish or coral. Good job. Good job. All right. So before I forget in this episode, I do want to thank our channel sponsors, Printed Reef, for sponsoring the channel and providing awesome 3d printed products like uh, this mushroom cage and these coral sand stands and coral placement this is a cor coral placement starter pack and in today's episode we're actually going to give these away so if you want to win these two packs right here from printed reef go ahead and leave a comment in the youtube video podcast 
So if you're listening on the audio platform, jump over to YouTube, check out the video podcast, and just leave a comment and say, I want Printed Reef, and you'll be entered for these two products right here. Awesome. And if you're a subscriber to the Coral Reef Talk, you can go over to printedreef.com slash the Coral Reef Talk and use the discount code to save 10% off your purchase. So you can use the code the Coral Reef Talk at checkout, and that is going to save you 10% off of your printed reef products. The link and the discount code will be down in the description below or the show notes here on the podcasting platform. If you're watching this on the video podcast, you'll be able to see the products that I'm holding up right now. If you're listening, check out the show notes for more information. Well, cool. So we talked about the basics of setting up a saltwater aquarium. We talked about uh, getting filtration for your tank, picking up a whatever size aquarium you're looking for. Of course, you need a stand and a place to put your tank. And then, of course, the nitrogen cycle, what it is and how to get it started. There's a variety of different ways. And also, if you want to learn more about the nitrogen cycle, you can sign up for the email list below to check out the reef tank starter list and that will give you more information about the nitrogen cycle and how to set up your aquarium but as we close the episode levi what else do we need to know about saltwater reef aquariums if we're a beginner um what else do we need to know about starting a tank and just right off the bat be patient don't rush be selective when you're starting to add things to your tank do your research Unlike I have in the past, just do your research, know what you're going to get. And I like, so when, when people are cycling tanks, I always like to tell them like plan out your tank while it's cycling, like kind of get like throw some things on your notes, like on your phone or whatever, just get a, like a list of fish that you want to add, do your research on the fish, corals, kind of figure out where you're going to place corals even. And maybe even during this time, uh, kind of mess with your flow. Like if you have your uh, wave makers are your wave pumps um kind of mess with your flow a little bit just see kind of where you're going to put corals on what you kind of want to do so yeah just take that time that it, when it's cycling just to kind of figure out what your plans are with the tank uh because that always makes that time go by a lot quicker um in my experience because you're getting yourself excited so when that time does come you're ready to go you get your first fish that you plan on getting you know what it does you know what it needs yeah and but, a lot of times that's like the the funnest part right so you're yeah you're getting into maybe the hobby for the very first time you're setting up your very first tank yeah like you said use all that time to research and to study mm-hmm. that way you know what you're going to get beforehand and a lot of times i mean for me when i first started i was researching all over the place i was all over the forums all over the different articles different websites just learning about all the different fish and all the different possibilities of what fish go together in your aquarium. And there's also fish compatibility guides out there that you can see what type of peaceful fish you can add to a nice peaceful community. Or maybe you want to do something more along the lines of the oddball reefer and go with some non-photosynthetic corals in your tank and stuff like that. Um, So yeah, definitely doing the research beforehand while it's cycling. It's going to help you during that time of waiting because you're like, man, I just have an empty tank. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I know we've all been there. And then once you once you get into the hobby and you get excited, I mean, it turns into an addiction. You get more tanks. Eight tanks now. (laughs) Yeah, eight tanks over there now. I got three now. So, I mean, you just keep going and going for sure. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out here on the Coral Reef Talk podcast. Thank you so much for learning with us about the nitrogen cycle and how to set up your very first aquarium. If you like this episode, please be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below maybe your favorite moment of today's episode. And don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.